All right, now that we've gone ahead and talked about what a fungi is, what it looks like, how it reproduces, how it feeds, let's talk about the major groups. There are four major groups of fungi that we're going to go ahead and discuss today. Okay, the picture you see here is bread molds growing in petri dishes. Uh, bread molds are a type of thread-like fungi. This group contains about 600 different species of molds, including many common bread molds, such as the rhizopus, which is the most common bread mold you usually see on your breads. Uh, these fungi produce spores in thread-like hyphae, thus the name thread-like fungi. Pretty simple and self-explanatory on that one. The picture here is a type of sac fungi uh, growing on a forest floor. This group contains over 30,000 diverse species of fungi. It's the largest of all the groups, and it includes the yeasts, morals, truffles, and some fungi that cause plant diseases, such as Dutch elm disease. They're called sac fungi because they produce spores in structures that look like sacs. Picture Oh, one of my favorites, the classic toadstool mushroom. This guy is a member of the club fungi. This group includes about 25,000 species of mushrooms, bracket fungi, plant parasites, and puffballs. Club fungi produce spores and structures that look like clubs. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to see that. Uh, it's usually going to be a much smaller structure that you look at under a microscope. But if you were to look at it, again, it's going to have a nice club-like structure to it. Our final group is the imperfect fungi. The picture here is an up-close version of penicillium, the source for an important antibiotic. You guys know it as penicillin. Uh, we grow this in a number of labs, obviously, really important to the human race. There are 25,000 species in this group. Uh, the imperfect fungi are characterized by the fact that, to the best of our knowledge, they do not reproduce sexually at all. Uh, they never grow together. They only reproduce asexually, which sets them apart from the thread-like, sac, and club fungi. So if you're thinking about all the different types of fungi, remember we separate them by how they reproduce and the appearance of their spore-producing structures. Let's take a look now at how fungi affect us and the world around us. Uh, there are unfortunately quite a few fungi that can cause disease, both in plant diseases, I already mentioned Dutch elm disease, there are lots that cause loss of crops. Okay, there are also ones, however, that cause diseases in humans and other animals. One of the most well-known of which is athlete's foot, another one being ringworm. Uh, the picture here is just kind of funny. That's what ringworm looks like. You get a ring-like structure. And again, it's just misnamed, not actually a worm. It's a fungus growing under the skin. And the ring that you're seeing there is where those fruiting bodies are coming up to the surface. Uh, that's why it's so important for people that have ringworm to keep it covered up, uh, to not let that skin be exposed, because if they do, those spores will spread to other parts of their body and possibly uh, uh, skin on other people's bodies as well. So we want to go ahead and stay nice and healthy. Remember our little smiley face. <laughs> there are also several benefits we can get from fungi as well. First off, I can't mention it enough, they're such important decomposers. Along with the bacteria, they're the reason why all the things that die and all the waste products that are put out on our planet don't build up and choke and drown us all. They go ahead and get rid of them for us. We use them for food production, yeast to make breads. We use uh, certain molds to make different types of cheeses, like the blue cheese that's pictured here. And I don't know about you guys, but I love mushrooms on my pizza. Okay, we also have discovered that from different types of fungi, we can get great antibiotics. They have natural chemicals that help keep them healthy that will go ahead and kill certain types of bacteria, and we can use them for that. Most famous of those, of course, being penicillium, which is the uh, organism we get penicillin from. Fungi don't just help humans, though. They're important to a lot of organisms on our planet. Some fungi help plants grow larger and healthier when their hyphae grow among the plant's roots. The hyphae spread out underground, absorb water and nutrients from the soil, and give it to the plant. That way the plant grows larger than it would have grown without its fungal partner. We call this a fungus-plant root association. The plant, however, is not the only partner that benefits. The fungi get to feed on extra food that the plant makes and stores. This is a great mutualistic symbiotic relationship. And in fact, many plants are so dependent on their fungal partners that they can't survive well without them. Uh, orchids being the classic example, the picture that's here, uh, can't actually grow or survive well at all with their fungal partners. You have to have both growing together. 
Plants aren't the only thing that live in a mutualistic relationship with fungi, however. A lichen consists of a fungus and either algae or autotrophic bacteria that also live together in a mutualistic relationship. You've probably seen some of them. They're those flat, crusty patches that grow on tree barks or rocks. The fungus benefits they get the food that's produced by the algae or the bacteria. The algae or bacteria also benefit by getting water and minerals and other nutrients that are absorbed by the fungus. So again, great mutualistic relationship. And if you think back to environmental science last year, very important in soil production. These are the guys that go ahead and start breaking down the rocks and help produce soil in areas where there uh, isn't a lot of soil or there's not a lot of good soil. It's very important to our world. Well, that's about all we've got to talk about today about fungi, guys. Uh, if you're confused about anything, please feel free to go back, check it out. Remember to hit up that website I've got linked. I'll have instructions about that on the 7th grade science page. And I hope you guys learned a lot and enjoyed it. I'll see you back in class.